The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 853 Faces Departed and Gone Hours had passed, but Shinespark and Dior were nearing the top of the stone district. Shinespark knew if she looked back, she would be greeted by a sprawling forest far below, intermingled with settlements and plantations, and the distant smokestacks of Sosa, many of which had gone silent. But she kept her gaze steadfast and forward, to the point where the ponies in the streets started giving her concerned looks. None of them recognized her. None of them saw her as anything more than a young mayor with a mission. The map said there was a tunnel this way that led to the water district, Shinespark puffed, her legs and lungs burning. It should be right, she stopped, pointing to where the road dead-ended, one more zigzag up. There. Dior stumbled up beside her, rasping for breath. What are you attempting, an uphill marathon? This is a mountain for Sosa's sake. A mountain with our enemies on top of it. Shinespark stared up the mountain wall, where the winds buffeted the cliff face and made it unpassable, and up to the snowdrifts above those. Our comfort is the last thing I care about. Let's go. You do realize, Dior gasped, stumbling after her, that it's going to be guarded, and we'll be significantly more able to smooth talk our way through if we aren't this short on who said anything about it being guarded. Shinespark rounded the last corner, pointing at the empty entryway. If you're short on breath, save it. Uh, she was panting too. Dior warily followed as Shinespark reached the entrance without incident and stepped inside. What kind of organization would leave their front door open while actively generating bad feelings among the populace? Well, the Stone District can afford not to care, Shinespark grumbled. They're the ones who benefit from all this. It's all friendly territory for them. Funny, you should assume it's friendly territory. Shinespark jumped and spun around, her spine raising. Who was that? A hoof poked her barrel from below. Shinespark jumped again, looked down, and there was a face in the floor grinning naughtily up at her. Boo! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Shinespark flew backwards in surprise, hitting the wall and collapsing against the ground. What the? Yeah! <laughs> a pony fell out of the floor, rolling over and pounding the ground in a fit of laughter. Gotcha! You scream like a filly! Dior stared with the widest possible eyes. What? In the entire city? The newcomer was also Philly, maybe a pinch shorter than Shinespark, though it was hard to tell when she refused to get up and stop cackling. Shinespark quickly narrowed her eyes and remedied that with a burst of her horn, and soon the Philly was captive in her aura, emerald mane and tail dangling. She giggled and shrugged, showing off wings that didn't look like any Pegasuses either of the two had ever seen. Got you! What even are you? Shinespark turned her over in her aura, noting differences on her head and face as well. And why are you in my way? The filly blew a raspberry. Wouldn't you like to know? The name's Valet, and I'm here because this is my tunnel. Valet, hmm? And your tunnel? Dior took a step forward, eyes narrow. Whatever do you mean? Valet carelessly shrugged. It's like this, right? I want to meet someone important. So I'm looking around and find a guy guarding this tunnel, and what does that mean? There's something important here. So I made him go away, and now it's my tunnel, because if there's something important, then someone important is gonna come check on it. She folded her forelegs in midair and raised an eyebrow. So, who are you? Looks like average class kids to me. Your planning and perception are remarkable, Shinespark deadpan, holding Valet in aura. You aren't from around here, are you? It's that easy to tell, huh? Valet frowned. Well, let me tell you two things. First, fruit is delicious. And second, I'm hungry. Hint, hint. Dior blinked at her. Whatever does that have to do with anything at all, you hooligan? Cause it's my cave, Valet gave him a suspicious look. And you look like you want to go through here, which is making me think I should make it a tall road. Do you have any fruit? Shinesburg glanced at her saddlebags. No, we have water bottles, but they're for us and not for you. 
and you're currently stuck, so there's nothing you can do to stop us. Valet gave her a non-comprehending stare, still trapped in the telekinesis. Come on, Shinespark sighed, trotting off down the tunnel. Let's leave her to her business. The air followed, and soon Shinespark got far enough away that she was forced to let her horn go out. Phew, she sighed. Now we need to... Less than a second passed before she was flying through the air back toward the entrance. Valet flew along with her in an acrobatic suplex, knocking Shinespark onto her back on the stone. Valet landed atop her, hooves on her cheeks and tail wagging. Who's currently stuck now, huh? Shinespark's pupil shrank. Don't root! Come on, pay up! Valet beckoned with a hoof, then frowned. You've really got nothing, have you? Get off, Shinespark threatened. I'm here for critical business and you're treating this like a game. Get out of my way! Valet whistled. Oh, so now you're important. Yeah, look, I'll cut your deal. Free passage for the low, low price of... She contemplated for a second longer, then leaned in and gave Shinespark a kiss. This time, it was Valet who was flung away, Shinespark's telekinesis pinning her against the ceiling. I'm twelve, Shinespark yelled up at her, furiously red. That's gross! And I'm less than one, Valet winked. Sounds like an excuse to me. But hey, if you're madder about that, then that we're both fillies. Shinespark gave her a dangerous look. Valet bit her lip. Parents don't want you dating yet? Dior watched the exchange with an odd expression. Shinespark... F forget this. Shinespark stomped back down the tunnel. I don't need distractions. Come on, Dior. We're going up. Have fun! Valet waved, still pinned to the ceiling. I'll call that my toll. And hey, if you see any bananas, think of me. For the best. Shinespark didn't respond, fast on her way to the Sky District. Shinespark and Dior felt the chill of the mountains before they saw it. <laughs> Shinespark blew on her forehoofs as she walked, the blue stone caverns of the water district arching round her. Shouldn't have used metal horseshoes. Dior followed stoically behind. The annoyance of her meeting with Valet was like paper on a fire, burning quick and hot next to the logs of her memories of Sosa. For speech after speech, Arambai had defended his workers, taking over responsibility for the other two factories three years earlier by popular demand, and working his hardest to keep them afloat. The airy, entitled voice of the stallion he had been meeting with pricked like a thorn in a ribcage, and Shinespark walked quickly, the chill in the air only adding more of an impetus for her to reach her destination. Eventually, her map led him through, and a door swung open to a concrete platform that had been recently cleared of a snowdrift. The sky was cloudless and the sun blinding, more so when the ground was pure white and reflective, save for a crisscross of cleared cut roads where stallions trudged and materials were hauled between an upcoming spire and a forest of raised platforms. The skyport, Dior remarked, pointing southwest, it looks more like they're making free of them. The terminals rose like stands of metal mushrooms, a great disc on a central spire surrounded by taller, smaller ones for each of the main hubs. Above one, a central ceiling dome of glass was finished, while a second had a lattice of steel beams halfway installed that would someday support another. In sky freeze, Shinespark growled, pointing to the golden tower ahead that ended jagged and incomplete. At the surface, its plating was immaculate, gold mixed with glass, and the covering fell away as her eyes traveled upwards, its internal supports growing more and more exposed until they reached the top. I'm sure that's the command center. She and Dior waded through the snow, making slow progress to the ground level entrance. The area immediately outside it was cleared, but they wound through the drifts to avoid stallions carrying materials, and by the time they reached the entrance, Shinespark felt her hooves were too numb to even knock. She lit her horn instead. The door cracked open with a rumble, parting before she could get her aura around it, and a yak stepped out, flanked by suited ponies. They pretended not to notice Shinespark and Dior, and the children were roughly kicked to the side. 
Yes, Ambassador. As I was saying, one of the ponies drawled. Hey, Shinebuck yelled, rising to her hooves. Who do you think you are? The yak turned slowly to face her and frowned. Why are there foals on a construction site? We have a schedule, Ambassador Herman, the other pony breathed, tapping his shoulder. Many progress scenarios to check up on. We are here, Shinesburg announced, cutting him off, because this project has been trampling our economy and ruining the Sosan's pride, and I want to see for myself what face is attached to all of it. Speaking, Herman replied, looking at her with an impatient expression. Shinesburg stared at him. Get out of our land. Herman brushed a hoof, covering her completely with a drift of snow. Children are their parents' responsibilities, not mine. Moving on. Without a backward glance, the trio let the doors to Skyfree slam shut, and they sauntered slowly away. End of chapter 853